Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we're on episode number 76. As always, I'm Shane. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also go to codekarate.com, sign up for the newsletter, and if you're on Google+, find me there as well. Today we're going to be talking about a module primarily used for people who administer Drupal websites. And the module we're going to be looking at today is the Backup and Migrate module. Now I've used this in the past. I don't use it on every site because I do a lot of my backups from the server level. But if you are one of those people who are using shared hosting or something like that and you can't really control the server, you can't set up your own backup system the way you want to, the Backup and Migrate module is just a fantastic module for being able to do that. Let's go ahead and get started and we'll walk through some of the basics. I'm not going to be able to go through all of it because it's a uh, it allows you to do quite a bit. It's all based around being able to just back up the database on your Drupal website. And it allows you to do things like scheduled backups. Uh, there's even helper modules you can look at for encrypting your backup files. You can store the backups on the server or you can request and have it downloaded. So you can actually have a backup file downloaded to your local computer. So a whole bunch of different options here. We're going to go through a few of them today, and you can explore the rest yourself. Today we are on a test site here, just pretty basic, not a lot of content. I'm going to go ahead and hop over to the modules page and show you that I already have the Backup and Migrate module installed. Go ahead and you can check out the permissions here. There are quite a few permissions for the Backup and Migrate module. There's permissions to access the backup and migrate, admin section, perform a backup, access backup files, delete, restore, and administer the entire backup and migrate uh, module. So you, you're going to want to take a look at that and see who you want to allow to be able to access that. Generally, you're just going to want administrators to be able to do that kind of stuff, but it's pretty flexible. We'll go ahead and click on the configure link here and now you have a bunch of options here, a bunch of different menus. The first thing you can do is do a quick backup. Basically it's going to back up the default Drupal database and you can have it download or go to the manual backups directory using the default settings. So I'm going to go and click download and I'm going to let that run for a second. And as you can see it has already popped down here. It gives me a file which I can open up. Let me go ahead and pull this over here so you can see it. And as you can see, it gives me a gzip of the actual database file. So I can save that. And let's say I want to come back and re-upload that or restore it. I just click Restore, choose the backup file, and I'm ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and give that a quick test and just show how that works. I'm going to come in here and I am going to add a new piece of content so I'm going to add a, uh, just another test article here I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because it's going to be going away here in a second so I went ahead and I saved that now if I come back into the modules page find backup and migrate and click configure and I click restore going to go ahead and choose the backup options here. Let me go ahead and find it. There it is. And I hit restore now. It should go ahead and restore the file. You can see it gives you a little bit of information here. It also gives you a warning. Restoring will delete some or all of your data and cannot be undone. So it says always tested on a non-production server. You can also force your site to go offline during that process which is potentially useful especially if you're doing it on a live site but now if we come back to the home page you'll notice that there's still only two articles that third article that we just created is now completely gone just because we restored that backup so that's how simple and easy it is to just roll back to another point in time using the backup and migrate module you can also do a lot more with it so let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other tabs the destinations option allows you to specify different destinations. 
there are two already set up for directories. One's a manual backups directory, so if you manually back it up, it will be dropped in this location on the server. So it says private backup underscore migrate slash manual. In case you're wondering what the private actually means, I'll show you that here in a second. But the scheduled backups directory is very similar. Private backup migrate slash scheduled. There's also the destination of the actual database itself that's that is being backed up. So here mine looks like that. Yours will probably look a little different, especially if you're running it on your own local host. You can add another destination. You can add a server directory, a MySQL database. You can even specify an FTP directory. So if you want the backup to be dropped into a specific FTP location, you go ahead and fill out that information. And you can specify that as a backup directory. You can also use Amazon S3, although it does require, if you read the note here, it does require the installation of another library. I've never used it, but it's a very cool concept. You can have an Amazon S3 bucket and have all your backups be stored in that one location. And you can also have it sent through email. Probably not good for extremely large databases, but if you have a simple site and you just want it emailed to you maybe every week or every day, you can go ahead and specify email location just by giving it an email address and then a, just a name for your own partner, so your own for your own use to have it show up here in this table. <coughs> okay, so now that we know what the destinations are, I'm going to go ahead and show you what this private means. If you come over here to the configuration page and click on file system, it's going to specify the public file and private file system paths. So you can see that in my case, the private file systems in the sites test.codecrowdy.com private files directory. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to create a backup. And I've already done one, so I'll just do another one here, and I'll back it up to the manual backups directory. And this is going to take a little bit of time, but while I'm at it, I will go ahead and pull up the website here. So you see it was in pr private files backup migrate and then manual for the backups directory. You can see that currently there's one in here that I did earlier and as soon as this one is done backing up there will be more files that will be dropped into this location. Takes a few seconds here. So you'll see now that this has been created I should be able to refresh here you can see now there are more files in here that were manually backed up to this manual backup directory. You can see I now have a message here saying the default database was backed up successfully. Gives you the the name of the file and it tells you the destination. It also allows you to download that, restore it, or delete it. So now if we come into destinations, go into the manual backup directory we can go ahead and list the files and it'll list those two files and allow you to download those files from the server, restore them, or delete those backups. So it's already extremely useful but there's even more. You can set up specific profiles. So when you're backing up and you're doing an advanced backup you can specify the file name, the timestamp format, what type of compression you want to use, you can specify if you want specific tables or data to be dropped from tables. So in this case, by default, it drops all of the cache tables. It also drops the watchdog table, which is all your logging. So it doesn't store the data of that in the backup. You can also have it send an email if there's a backup successful or a backup error. Also take the site offline. So all these different options that you can set during an advanced backup. The profiles section allows you to take that a step further and save that information into a profile which you can then use either during your scheduled backups or during your manual backups. So if I wanted to say let's say I wanted to use the default but I wanted the watchdog directory to be included for some reason or the watchdog data in the watchdog table. So I'm going to go uncheck this. I held control there to make sure all these other ones are still selected and let's also say I want to be notified if there's a if there's a backup error so I'll just have it 
send an email. So I go ahead and save the profile. Now there's a logging profile in the default settings. So now if I go do a backup, you can see I can use this logging profile instead of the default settings. The last thing we're going to go over quickly is scheduling. The schedules tab allows you to add a schedule. So if I want to create a schedule called daily backups, I can select either my default settings or my other profile. I'll leave it at the default. You can say backup every one day. You can specify how many backup files to keep. You can also specify what destinations. In this case, it creates a scheduled backups directory, so I'm just going to go there. Let's say you only want to keep 30 backup files. So this will, in theory, keep 30 days worth of data and it will then start deleting those each time. So we can go ahead and save the schedule. And now if we run cron, that should go ahead and create that backup. So I'm going to hop over to the command line and run cron here. And hopefully if everything is working correctly, it should just create this backup. I'm assuming it's going to create it on the first cron run of the day. And then the next time after midnight, the next day, the next time cron runs, it should create a backup again. So this will probably take a little bit of time to run. So as I mentioned before, go ahead and follow me on Twitter if you're not already. Check out Google+. And hey, if you're bored, go ahead and mention me on Twitter and ask me a question or something like that. I usually try to get to them as quickly as I can. Sometimes it takes a couple days, sometimes a week. But I generally do get to it eventually. And while we're waiting, we'll go ahead and open this up. You can see that a scheduled directory was created. This wasn't here before. You can see that there is an info file created. The backup file is still in process of being created, so it's still spinning through that cron run. And as soon as this is done, we should be good to go. Okay, it looks like it's finished now, so if I refresh, you can see the backup file has now been dropped into the scheduled directory and as long as you have cron set up on your website every day this backup is going to be running it's going to be dropping those into that folder I can of course specify a different destination have it emailed to me have it dropped on Amazon S3 or through FTP the other thing you might want to consider is using the one of the contributed modules listed off this page to in, actually encrypt the backup file so someone can't take your backup file and take all the information off of it without being able to decrypt it. So those are all things you can take a look at and as I said this is a very useful module especially if you don't have something set up for backups already it makes it really easy to restore to a, you know, a past time and I highly recommend you use it on your Drupal sites if you need it. Thanks for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal and we'll be back again next time.